Hey you going there guys and welcome to another episode of the Smashing Crossbar podcast. I apologise for the delays and so forth. Uh, we are running a little bit late. Labby is having a fair bit of difficulty sorting out his phone and data and freaking bloody awesome. apps and shit and Christ knows what. So we're, Ben's going to sort of take over the reins a bit on trying to get him on here. Um, yeah, chaos. No idea what's going on. Thanks for joining me anyway, mate. Always a pleasure. Mate, absolute chaos. Yeah, um, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, channel. Yeah, it yeah. was, the OBS yeah, was yeah. linked to Josh's. Yeah, that was the And it way. wasn't, and I'll, I'll fucking sort that later. Just, yeah, keep up with labs. Let's try and get right. him to call me, and it's all there. Um, anyway, guys, obviously, well, we are hoping to get Labby on. Hang on, just call mobile. That's me. I okay. said to him, just call my mobile. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Obviously... He can't get onto Discord or anything else and whatever, so... He's got an older iPhone. Older iPhone, he's having issues. Anyway, we'll get there. Ben will keep up to date on this and we'll try and get him on as soon as we possibly can. Um, in saying that, obviously we do have a little bit on tonight. Um, we obviously, we we're going to talk to Labby in regards to, obviously, his time at the Jets and um, obviously his coaching role now and a little bit about the A-League in general. Um, obviously, being a coach or well, an assistant coach, obviously at Western Sydney, it will um, give us a little bit of insight into how everything's going in the A League and obviously in another team's camp. Um, have they stood down all their players and staff? Are they still got a few up and running? Who knows? We'll see how we go. Um, other than that, we have spoken to the few of the admins from Newcastle Jet Supporters Group page. Yeah. There was mass dramas. Yes, um, apparently in regards to a Newcastle Jets signed shirt, which they got from Laurie McKinna um, to obviously give away for um, reaching X amount of um, members or something along those lines. I think it was page likes. Yeah, page likes, I think. So I think it was about 3,000. So they're doing a pretty good job yeah. on it, um, which is great. So they had mass dramas. I spoke to a couple of the admin boys. They've asked me to do a draw and get it over the line and let's give some lucky person a, um, you know. So yeah, we're a, doing it now. A shirt, we're gonna do it. In saying that though, we did originally, obviously they're having drums getting the signed shirt back, um, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. So they were talking about possibly just, you know, buying a shirt or whatever it was and then the winner can choose the color or whatever and we'll get it out to them. In saying that, I'm going to go one better. Um, I figured... Would you like me to get one? <laughs> I figured you, you can stand at the back of model. Joel's here. Joel! Griffo's here. Griffo. Mate, you want to jump on? <laughs> <laughs> We're having a bit of dramas with Labby. Yeah, your, your wife wants to know if this is another trivia. No, no trivia tonight. Tomorrow night is trivia night. Tomorrow night, guys, is trivia night. <coughs> Excuse um, me. So... Um, in regards to, oh, you know, just hold one of them. Hold on. In regards to obviously the situation where they were talking about giving away a shirt and so forth, I thought I'd go off my own back. I've got a few signed shirts here, which I'm happy to give away to the lucky winner, which we'll draw out later in the show. Um, what have you got? 2014-15 season. Now ten that's year, the ten year one. anniversary. Uh, Newcastle. That's. 2010-11, and I believe points. that is 9-10, so on one of their train, old training tops. So at the end of the day, the winner um, can choose one of those shirts. Um, okay, I figured, well, well back on that. I figured I'd give them a choice of three, and we'll, um, we'll post that out to you and so Apparently forth. Apparently Andy wants to win. Do we put him in the draw? Andy, I don't want to <laughs> ship it out to ship it out to the UK. What we're going to do is we are going to leave it open for say half an hour. Um, if you do want to get in, what your name down in the chat, either on Facebook or on YouTube, and um, we'll get Ben to write. Chad's calling you an Indian giver. Wow, <laughs> wow, thanks, Chad. <laughs> Only one of your shirts is there. Calm down. Uh, was it one or two? I can't remember. Um, so yeah, as I said. Chad was... Right, that's all I needed. Um, yeah, I got a couple of shirts, obviously, previously off Chad. So, anyway, we're going to get into it without him at this point. We'll talk, obviously, a little bit about football in general. And he said he'll pay postage. 
Thanks, mate. Uh, it's generous. It's bloody expensive at the moment. Um, oh, yeah, to the UK. Any word right. on Labby? Not no, yet. Nothing. Um, Joel, if Joel's around and he wants to jump in, feel free. That'd be great. Um, you've got Discord, so we should have it. If not, probably yeah. doesn't anymore. They can't do an live. interview with probably us. Probably yeah, The first delete. thing they tell us is, I'm getting rid of this bloody thing. <laughs> Ah, oh, he loves it. He <laughs> loves it. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, we will then later a bit, a little bit later in the show, we'll get people a chance to come in and obviously um have a bit of a chat and a bit of a gander, and we'll we'll draw it closer to the end of the day. But lock easy. Let's um let's obviously we're going to talk to him about obviously the current affairs with obviously the A League and he likes of Viduka and so forth in the new panel <laughs> that they've. Dubbed. That they've decided to yeah create, but haven't haven't heard or haven't heard a peep. Lana wants in. Lana wants in. There you go. Oh, hang on. Now I need to. Where is the thing? Samantha wants in. Uh, no, I need to find. It um, now. what was I going to say? What were we talking about? Yeah. So obviously, have haven't haven't heard from Viduka in nearly what <laughs> a decade. Um, since he retired and so forth, and now obviously he's opened his mouth in an interview. What it was about a month ago, a bit over a month. Yeah. To one of the journeys when he was over in Croatia. Um, and now it's just taken off. Now he can't he can't get out of it. So now he's on a panel and so forth. He's virtually called the AIS um needs to come back and obviously they need to get back the the AIS need to get back to where they were, reducing obviously, you know, the young talent and obviously getting them all overseas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so forth. Um me of course. There you go. Luke's, Luke's, Luke wants in as well. Um, but I'm yeah. just double checking to make sure that I don't have double up on names. <laughs> but yeah, so look, as I said, so obviously Maduka was is joined on this bandwagon. Skoko's on there as well. A few obviously. Um, well, yeah, the initial Gilroos. interview. The, the initial interview was it was that six way one that they did with yeah Schwarzer, Grella, um, John Eloise. Yeah, I'll watch that. More and, the yeah. two-hour interview took me nearly four hours to watch. But it was a great interview, though. It really it, well, was. It was. It and it was, was a good insight, obviously, hearing from professionals, which we don't get a lot Thanks of. for allowing more entries, guys. That's all right. No, as I said, we figured, why not? Obviously, we'll give you more time to jump on. and um, Figured we'd open, our, open it up to our side as well. Yeah, absolutely, as I said. Um, yeah, so obviously... We, we, I mean, I saw the shit show that rolled out. Refuse to comment on. You know, <laughs> what I'm like, go, I've, got we... all, I've got all the pages, look, but I just don't comment on them. Yeah, look, I, yeah, I'm, I'm... and for giveaways like that, I mean, personally, yeah. I don't enter into them. Yeah, no, no, because yeah, I've got, I've, reason. I've got enough shit. Yeah, yeah. like if I get another signed shirt, the missus would hang me. <laughs> if it's free, <laughs> um, no, but we've already got two. No, 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 no. I, I, yeah. I don't have enough wall space in here look, to put the ones that I do have up. Look, at the end of the day, I'm not going to get into too much detail of what happened. He knows what happened. Everyone else knows what happened. Well, yeah, they um, came out and they they, they put up. I, I read the post last he's, night. I'm sure getting plenty of stick for it and everything else. And yeah. the best thing and he can we'll do. And we'll premise this by saying we do not incite violence. No, absolutely. We do not absolutely. incite the, no. the, the chasing of is, the young lad. The biggest thing is just give the shirt back to the boys and let them give it away at another date and move on. You know what I mean? It's that simple. Just give, the, give it back so we can. Do it prop so they can do it properly next time. Yeah, well, look, and we don't have look, to. Only entering in because you guys are doing it. <laughs> calm down, mate. Calm down. We're all about helping, obviously, all the fan pages and so forth. And as I said, the few of the admins that are loyal, obviously, you know, they don't need this shit, and they don't need you know somebody to come on like that and obviously taint and possibly ruin um, a Facebook page like that. Who you know they've been doing this for a while, and they they've been around they, do, they do a great job. They do giveaways, other giveaways. They're doing um, a current fire pit. Um, oh, I've seen that one. Giveaway, which, yeah, schmick, um, which I do, I'm in contact with, and we might whack it on here as well. We'll talk about that at a later date. But yeah, yeah, as we'll, I said, that, we'll give you about 40 minutes. If you, if you just want to roll your name through, um, whack it on the spreadsheet. And, oh, I'll check the Facebook page too. At the end of the day, Case. Labby was meant, to give, was meant to pick a number, because obviously we're just on a spreadsheet. It's on a spreadsheet, everyone's in their own cell. So it's basically, a, I'll go, at one point we'll turn around and go, right, Give me a number of X, between X number and X number, and whatever number he calls, I'll match it up to the correct cell. I'll even show you guys on screen to see that it's all been done legit. Yeah. Um, I'll sh I'll show you the entire spreadsheet. Uh, absolutely. Um. So yeah, what was I going to say? So yeah, obviously we were talking about the 
the A League in general, and that's obviously what we're going to talk about. To hopefully talk to Labby about if he does eventually jump on here. Yes, look who's arrived, McKenna. McKenna. McKenna's fucking magic. He <laughs> wears a magic hat. He used to come back on series, but then he said, "Fuck that." I've got that video on my computer somewhere. Alrighty, I just sorting it out. Alrighty, Laurie. Good thing you let Labby go, mate. Hopeless at communication. Hopeless at technology. <laughs> right here. I will call your mobile. Just sorting it out. Right here. We're getting Labby. We're getting Labby. We're getting, we're, Labby will be here Far at some out. point. <laughs> um, we will state this now. Obviously, we've seen the jet stream um, and good on ferns and everything that he does. He's having, been having a bit of dramas with, obviously, his calls and everything else lately, which I'm sure he'll sort out. This one won't go to plan because, obviously, Labby's having a bit of drama. So we'll stick the phone up as close to the mic as we possibly can and just let us know if it's too yeah. crackly. Or... I mean, we take we take a few days prior to organising all these to get the lads set up on the platform that we this use is why I and like we to... run them through it. <laughs> and this is why we do that. But um, Labby seems surprisingly very uh, difficult to grab a hold of. <laughs> he's a busy man. He's a, he is a very busy man. Um, Lor- I'm sure Laurie will tell you. He, he, he's in here. He, yeah, he's... Laurie, Laurie's over on the Facebook side. He coached him and so forth here in the Facebook so. Um, but yeah, as I said, we're talking about we're going to talk a bit about obviously Australian football and um, the MPL side of things, and possibly the second tier and everything else, which I think a lot of us, you know a lot of us are on board with, and we would like to see happen. Yeah. How soon it's going to happen, it's hard to tell. Yeah, we can talk about Adelaide's. Yeah, Adelaide, yeah, obviously Adelaide's, <laughs> Adelaide's dramas in the past twenty four hours. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying it was drama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, blessing in disguise. Blessing in disguise. I did call it when I, that that yeah. one game he did rock up in a suit. I'm like, he's getting the axe. <laughs> it, well, Why else would he be wearing a suit to a game? He's wore a tracksuit for the entire rest of the season. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but yeah, like, what, 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 let's start with. We'll, we'll start with obviously the MPL scenario. Like, what's what, what's your take on it? Do you think the MPL, and not just obviously, <laughs> Laurie McKinnon, my pleasure. It is hard to get on for the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, you gave up on Discord Laurie, a long time ago. Laurie has, about... like, pictures in his inbox that we've <laughs> sent him with, like, instructions on how to access the platform that we use. Uh, Alex Evans, there you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> What's a drama, Leeds? Absolutely. Well, he's now done it, like, three or four times. Laurie's had to do it, like, three or four times. Absolutely. Um, obviously, ben, Laurie... Luke, Luke, Luke says it. Ben did call it. He did call it. Laurie, mate, while you're in here, obviously, I... About this whole shirt scenario and so forth. Obviously, we've heard so many people. I'm just going way off topic. We're talking NPL. Never go this. Yeah, it uh, it'll happen. Sorry, guys. It does happen. We are passionate about football and we like to try and cover 500 things in roughly an hour and a bit. Show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, while you're here, Laurie, before you do. <laughs> you want to read that to the people on YouTube so you can't read that? All right. So for everyone who's on the YouTube side that can't see the Facebook chat, Laurie's rolled in, obviously. And he's uh, in getting onto the platform that we use and all the photos that we've sent on how to do it. His response is, it's like losing your virginity. It takes time. There is our CEO, ladies and gentlemen. I, I Couldn't got, have said it better myself. I've got money on it. I've got money on it. If we friggin', if we, if we pass basic information, text, if we text his wife, that basic, hey, download the app. I've got money on it, says she does it in like that. Yeah. <laughs> She's used, probably used to quick things. Hey, like, that's how Joe did it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do this here at Wifey. Nah. He, <laughs> she's, she's, he won't tell that, she's, though. She's probably used to quick things, Laurie. Or yeah. well, Reed's managed it himself. Um, but while you're here, Laurie, we'll talk, we'll talk about this quickly about this shirt. Obviously, you've, you know, Laurie's, I'm sure, seen the drama and everything else about, you know, the whole banning scenarios of this bloke. <laughs> it's over pretty quick, though. And so forth. Um, look, at the end of the day, we don't want to ban the bloke. We don't want it to get to that. We, we just want the shirt back so we can, as I said, redraw the thing. And I'm sure Laurie... We'll state that as well. We just want the shirt back so we can, you know, give it to someone, obviously, who, um, you know, rightfully deserves it and without any rigging or dramas of, obviously, draws. But talking about the MPL, do you feel that the MPL is up to scratch? Do you think the MPL is ready? And I'm not talking... Because I can sit here and talk about the Northern Premier League MPL because I think that's... Well, I can sit here and tell you about the Victorian MPL. I can't... Yeah, I'm can't. talking as a, as a whole. Because you've got to... You've got to, you've got to take into consideration. If, if they are going to do it, they're going to need a lot of backing. They're going to need a lot of money, and that's the whole NPL. Yeah. So, um, and obviously some NPL leagues will need a lot more backing than obviously others. Yeah. I think the Adelaide NPL is 
The, I, I'm, there, not, I'm not so much worried about the Adelaide, uh, the the South Australian NPL. I'd be more worried about your Tasmanian NPL. Oh yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like you know, you, like Adelaide and Brisbane, they've got pretty high NPL standards and so forth. Obviously, yeah. you got North Queensland Furies and stuff like that, who obviously had money. You know, your Melbourne Knights even, obviously, and stuff like that. So yeah, they've Cold got the fi- and it, and it comes down from the top facilities. Um, lighting is a major thing, obviously. Um, well, we've been getting... to, we've been to quite a few. Victorian NPL games, yeah, and the standard of um, facilities and ground, yeah, in comparison from say your Knights to your, for instance, who's the one playing at? No, it's not there. Um, like just the difference in grounds, yeah, like the way the Knights have their ground to say Bentley, for instance, because we've been to both of those. Correct. They're both very different facilities. Hundred percent. Knights. Is one of those venues, although quite large, yep. is has a has a chord of yep. you know you, you feel like you're stepping into the mid 1990s when you walk into that joint. Oh, absolutely. it hasn't had a refresh or an update in, in 20 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. And as, whereas Bentley, purpose built, yeah, a bit more modern, correct. You know, correct. better catering facility. As I said, if you guys have got any you know, questions on the topics we're talking about, or you've got a point of view, I think Alex has said something in regards to it as well. Um, obviously, there's a few obvi- a few guys in here that obviously coach at a youth level or of, and so forth of the NPL. I know Alex does. Um, so, obviously, those guys have obviously got an insight into it. Um, Chris's daughter has knocked off one of his he- um, earpieces and she's trying to talk to us. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> right. um, but, yeah, look, as I said, it's. I, th- I, th- I still think we're talking maybe five years. Yeah. Alex Evans comes in with, as a youth NPL coach, I rate the Newcastle NPL standard very highly. For those who don't know me, I don't throw out compliments often. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm one of those that knows he does not throw out those compliments. Um, yeah, true, true. Very often, especially um, when you're talking in the realms of football shirts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look, as I said, like, I, I, I never played in the NPL. Um, I played I didn't in the state NBN State League back when I was obviously a lot younger and so forth for the Buds and Toronto and so forth before they got relegated. Um, look, the standard back then was still good. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the, the coaching, um, the equipment, everything like that, it, it's great. It is good. But the biggest problem What's is... Up, Jason? How are you, mate? Um, the, I think the biggest thing with Newcastle is exposure. And I think that's the biggest problem with a lot of other MPL like competitions. Melbourne's great. Melbourne gets a lot of exposure. They they pretty well get every game played on a platform of some sort, whether it be YouTube, yep. Facebook, um yeah, and it's sort of slowly coming around to most of them that Bar T V do a great job in Newcastle. Yeah. Um and the ACT. Who where... does it down here? I think it's PS4. Well, no, PS4, PS4. no, nah, PS4 used to. It's pretty much Vic Soccer now, so um or well, Victorian. Um, yeah, the, yeah, just the NPL, yeah. Victorian NPL. They just do it on their they Facebook page. They just do it on their own now. They just do it on their Facebook page, yeah. Um, so Bar TV, obviously, is a great platform, to, you know, and it's obviously helps for me, and obviously people who don't live in Newcastle and can't get to every game, which is great. Yeah. Um, gives them, obviously, it gives us, obviously, something to watch and, you know, everything else, and we thank them, obviously, for that. But in general, I think it's just so far, you know, not there. And that's, I did see that too, Laurie. Uh, Darren Fair Stewart's enough. father, Ray Stewart, passed away on Saturday. A Absol- Toronto legend over 500 Absolutely. Games. I did see that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I had the pleasure of meeting him um, you know, years ago now. I think it was about 10 years ago when I was at the Stags for a little bit. Um, yeah, great bloke. Um, and as I said, you know, great footballer as well, obviously international. And um, he done a lot for the Stags um, down there, obviously, with obviously coaching and on the board and there for a bit and everything. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely terrible, um, unfortunate news. But um, as I said, I'm sure they'll do something for him in that when, obviously, we get back to it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there's been a few, actually, there's been, actually, there's been a few passings in, in recent, you know, we'll say months or so. There was a, um, I've totally forgot his name. Yeah, don't so, talk to me about that. I've got to deal with one tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name. My, West, first, my, first, West my first funeral by live stream. It'd be interesting. It'd be different. It'd be different. It's a bit of a joke, but it's, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it was, a, uh, it was an old guy from um, West Wall's End. Um, yes, yeah, uh, that one was name. about. Oh, there was, was one a bit over a month ago. Yeah, 
Yeah. I think that's the one I saw. Yeah, yeah. But again, West, West. I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but yeah, he was. He was again another legend of the club, and that's obviously you know, it's good to see. Obviously, the guys paying respects, obviously to these legends who got the club from nothing. Yeah. To obviously where Alex they are Evans now. comes in on Facebook with a look at it this way. Whenever the FFA Cup happens, the Melbourne NPL teams always get the first viewing from Foxtel. Bar TV in Newcastle is absolutely fantastic. I can tell you right now, yeah. Bar TV anywhere on YouTube, anywhere you can access YouTube is fantastic. I watch a lot of um, Northern New South Wales NPL down here in Melbourne, just purely on YouTube because of Bar TV. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think, um, yeah, see, it's hard as well. You know? I, mean, I think the FFA Cup should be doing a lot more in exposure. Um, in getting tank for the, are you talking more the lower end side or oh, early, early days early days obviously you know before you get to the 32 even um, you know obviously we're not expecting to watch everyone yeah but I you mean... know let, but let's get it on a decent platform you know what I mean like let's get it on something that I mean KO is good because you can get them you get them all on KO don't you yeah I think, that was, I think was it last year's one was the first time was last year's one the first time that they broadcast all of them on KO and you can pick which pick which oh, one you want. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was early. But because yeah, Fox was, used to have late. the main no, they used to do it on Fox Sports online only. So there were some games that you'd have to sign up for a Fox account. Yeah, which I still pay for, funnily enough. Yeah. Um. So yeah, watch those other games, and then Foxtel would have one broadcasted, but they jump away when there was a goal everywhere else. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. I mean, they still do that. They did that last year, but they've never all been on Foxtel. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest um, thing uh, for me is broadcast. I mean, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can bring the MPL into a tier two unless mm. you are getting exposure. Well, he, and for it to work, the FFA and I'm, I know Laurie's around, so I'll keep my words, <laughs> my own words. Um, yeah, strictly, the FFA. I'm not. Words. I'm not the FFA. I'm not one yeah. of the independents, but. The the broadcast deal, whether it stays with Fox or yeah, not, yeah, Mass, yeah, Mass, um, Mass, yeah. that needs to be sorted before for the A League before we even talk mm-hmm. promo relegation. Because what happens in that deal yep. will affect anything lower down that yeah, we yeah. bring into place. And yeah. I, I'm a, as much as I would love for promotion and relegation, the thing that puts me off from it as much as I'd love to see it. We're not, especially now, especially because of COVID. Yeah. Um, the the A League is not in a financial position yet, or the FFA is even not even in a financial position to enact that yet. Logistically, A League clubs, <clears throat> it's a nightmare for them to travel. Yeah. Now you're going to, and those costs are quite high, as Laurie's mentioned to us previously before. Yeah. Um, you know. Before <coughs> Pelican, I think it was bus to Sydney, then flight from Sydney to Adelaide. Now we fly direct from Newy to Adelaide through. Yeah, Pelican. I yeah. can't remember. It. I think I think that yeah, was the, the old, old, old Pelican um, Air Base. Oh, but logistically nightmare and expensive. Oh, so you're going to put absolutely. that sort of burden on an MPL club, yeah. and I say that in air quotes, who yeah. come into a second division. Yeah. How are they going to manage that? Yeah, no, again, only, you, that... there's only so much money coming in from the governing body, and you'd mm-hmm. assume that if the FFA did enact the second division, they would be financially supporting yeah. that division as they do the A League to an extent, correct? To correct. cover some correct. of those costs. Yeah. So it's going to be if those costs are already hard enough in the A League because travel in Australia is difficult. Yeah. How are the lower league teams going to be able to? Oh well, the second division teams in this case. Yeah. Going to deal with that financial burden. 100%. I mean, some of them find it hard just for the FFA Cup. Oh, correct. And, and then you want to do, is, and then you want to do an entire season of it. And that obviously, and they're not professional athletes. That too, they've got to get time off work. Time and there's, off, yeah. yeah, there's a whole but balancing act. This is, this is but what I'm saying. You'd assume if we had a second division, here's the big thing that needs to be stated: Does that division then become professional? Because it can't be semi-professional. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, look, as I said, I think a thing as well... Laurie comes in with, we have to get the TV deal right for the A-League first and clubs can break even before we even consider a Division 2. Um, absolutely. Agreed. And, I, this I, is that, why, and that's been my thought from day one. And that's why I said we're not, you know, we've been looking five years minimum um, for me. But yeah. that's what I'm talking about. But there are some people that just go, second Division needs to happen. 
Absolutely, it does. And every one would almost agree with that person. But, and I think everyone would love to see a second division, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it'd be fantastic. It shows that we're growing up. But, you know, we're early days. You know what I yeah. mean? How long was it before the, the Premier League became the Premier League? You know what I mean? It all came down to television rights and all and money, you know what I mean? You can't do it without it. Yeah. You need money. And the biggest thing is what what I was what I'm talking about in regards to um like showing the games and television. Yeah, you know, as he said, you know, obviously we can't get it the A you got the A League's gotta be sorted first. Mm. But we need you know, clubs make money off televised events. Yeah. Right? And to, if we can get that into the NPL now, yeah. I'm, not, I mean, I'm not talking Fox Sports or KO Sports even, your bar TVs and stuff like that and whatever other, like, um, you know, around, the, around Australia's have got, showing more stuff. Yeah, you keep reading them out. If he's... Laurie, we spend about $6,000 per night for accommodation and meals and a minimum two oh, nights per trip. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Exactly right. We travel with 23 people. Some clubs travel with more. Yeah. And, and, yeah, we're, and we're, we're pretty light on oh, when we travel. 100%. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, we I mean, in comparisons to your Sydney's, your Western Sydney's, your victories, they're going to be like taking double back. Job. Bye, Job. Job Wheelhouse. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's coming in. Everyone's come to see Labby, and Labby's. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Again, just let us know, guys, if this echoes. I'd hope not. Put on Laddie. Hello. Labby. Hey, mate. Hey, get home, buddy. Good, good. Just sorry, but a bit late. <laughs> nah, mate. All good, mate. Obviously, we're having a bit of technical difficulties with apps and <laughs> all, all, all the fun stuff. You're actually, um, you've come in. We're live. Obviously, we've got Joe Wheelhouse. Uh, Joel Griffiths was in here before. Laurie. Laurie's around. Laurie's in here and everything else. They're all keen to see you, mate. They're all keen to have a chat. <laughs> Must, must be a good time then. Abs- absolutely. Laurie's just come in on Facebook with We Want Labby. We Want Labby. <laughs> <laughs> just let us know, obviously, chat if you need him to sort of try and speak up a bit and so forth. We do apologise, obviously, with the phone and everything uh, else. All good. Um, well, I can hear you clear. Yeah, mate. No, it's good. I'm, I'm talking about, obviously, the YouTube guys and obviously everyone on Facebook watching. Um, Mate, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. How's, um, how's everything going in um, hibernation? Isolation, hot uh, Good, very good. Uh, get a bit of rest, get a bit of time to spend with the kids. Bit of housework around. Not a bad, not a bad day every day. Absolutely, mate. Obviously, you're um the you're the current assistant coach of Western Sydney Wanderers. We'll obviously touch a little bit, obviously, um about that, and obviously, it's, obviously your time at the Jets and everything else. Um, what what what's it what's it like at Western Sydney, mate? Obviously. You know, you've you've had a couple of stints at the Jets, and you're obviously back at Western Sydney for the second time. Obviously, first time off the pitch. But um, how's everything going, mate? He's how yeah, he's travelling. Yeah, down no, there. it's it's good. It's obviously I know I know the club sort of that I played here, so it makes it makes it easier. Uh, but in saying that, obviously Newcastle, it's always going to be close to me because for the history that I share with the club, but also with a few people in there. So, you know, I think in life you go through things like that and you get close to certain things and I'm the type of person that, you know, when someone sort of looks after you, you, you'll do anything to return the favour and you will always be a soft spot for you. So the two clubs are, are sort of close to me and they part of my family. Uh, Only when we play each other, which depending which side I am, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, look, as I said, mate. Like, obviously, we've heard seven teams have um, had to drop staff member um, players and so forth. Oh, I haven't really looked into it too much. Are you guys one of the seven? Are you have you still got players and staff on the books still, or have you let everyone go? No, no. Like, I'm not in that department in terms of what goes on. Yeah. Like I said, I've just gone straight away home. I don't keep up with any of it. I'm yep. a daddy daycare, so I look <laughs> after I look after the kids as much as I can now, and I've tried to sort of do to switch off. Um, you know, my my that's my concentration is there at the moment with the kids, the family, and stay safe. No, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Obviously, um, you spent three stints at the Jets. 
Um, you were there from the start. Of, from the start, obviously, two thousand and five. Uh, what was your obviously obviously a lot younger than what you are now, mate? What what was it like? Obviously, the inaugural season. Um, obviously, you know how how old were you? Obviously, when you obviously started two thousand and five season, and what was your take? Yeah, obviously, I was coming from Sydney, so sort of I was at the time a young boy, and sort of you think that you're going to a new place, which is going to be an outsider. You you will be an outsider, but. Obviously, for me, he just connected straight away. And then, obviously, to be part of that history, sort of in 2005, of entering the league and playing the first game, and, you know, that that's probably the highlight in terms of at the beginning. Yeah. Um, you know, you see things are, are they got together and everybody working behind the scenes and then, obviously, the players and the coaching stuff. So that's, that's something special. That's something that... You know, you sort of experience it once in a lifetime. Yeah. So, and like you said, I was a young kid, so it, it makes it special. But you definitely cannot forget it. So oh. that's for sure. And then as the time went on, obviously, it's, you know, you start to build new things and obviously another chapter, another chapter. And then I seem to have a lot of chapters when it comes to Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. Um, good luck, good ones, to be honest. Good ones. Uh, yep. Of, you know, like I said, when I went there, you know, you you come out you from Sydney and then you start thinking, okay, you could be an outsider for the beginning, but yep. never once I felt outsider. Um, you know, it's, uh, people they appreciate the small place in terms of let's say Sydney or Melbourne or other other mm. cities, but people appreciate there. There's a lot of lot of passion and. I think that's pretty much what I'm all about in terms of the way I've grown up. So I, I connected. I, I I sort of felt home, and and from there I started building obviously friends and everything else. In. Yeah. So yeah, it's like I said, it's a lot of chapters, I guess. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. As I said, we're not going to go too much into um your career and so <laughs> forth on this one. Obviously, um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about obviously football and obviously the NPL and which we've sort of started talking about before um, you jumped on quickly. But obviously you had a bit of, you, you left the Jets at the start and I think it was um, obviously with, with your first stint um, and you ended up over at, I believe it was, um, who was it? Um, Al- it was in Poland. Po- yeah, Poland for a bit as well. And <coughs> there's a few other short stints, I believe as well. I was in, I was in Croatia also Croatia, for, yeah. for a bit, of, not, not, not too long, but yeah, I was there too. Yeah, Poland. Poland um, was Poland was where you sort of got a bit of a taste of first team. Um, yeah, football? yeah. Look, I spent really? nearly three years there. You know. Yeah. Um, obviously, I got. Uh, I was young when I went there too, so probably a good age. Uh, seeing things, learn things. Yeah. You know, you live on your own. Obviously, I'm used to living on my own, but obviously, it's a different culture, different language, and then uh, that's something I really enjoy. The, the new cultures, learning about it, and obviously the languages. Um, for some reason, I, I like that, and I, I learn it pretty quick. Um, and then I'm comfortable with with that. So I love I love that sort of. I see it as a challenge. I just see it as an excitement or exciting time. You know. Yeah. No, so, absolutely. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I was in a big city there, and I had everything there. You know. So, yeah. um, you know, I came home. Obviously for Christmas time, but apart from that, I was all the time there. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, the, the league when I was back then was was okay. It was good, but now it's obviously it's picked up a lot. And after the, they had the Euros there, and the stadium got even done better. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's definitely gone up. But it's definitely a good good country to to come up as a youngster to yep. learn your trade in Europe. Yep. And then obviously from there you can kick on and depending what. What your path, where your path takes you. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of that. Um, and before we go any further, obviously, guys in the chat, if you guys have got any questions for, um, oh, know, here we go. That'd be um, yeah, Laurie's in the chat, mate. You could be if he if he bombard you with a question. <laughs> <you could be. laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> I think Joel was hanging around before as well. Yeah, Joel and Joe were in here before, and um, uh, they love you, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> probably not in the Western Sydney Wonder shirt, but I'm sure they love you. <laughs> um. But 
obviously, let, let's obviously, as I said, we could sit here for an hour and a half and two hours and talk Cheer about your talk about your three stints at the Jets. Um, we'll talk obviously a little bit about a couple of major milestones. Um, sc- scoring scoring a goal against David Beckham, obviously, not, not many not many players in the A League, obviously, can definitely say they've done that. What was what what was the game like? Obviously, what was the atmosphere? Obviously, it was packed. I remember being there and. Um, you know, the atmosphere was unbelievable. Um, obviously, Nathan Tinkler, although he didn't do a great deal of um, good, we'll say. Um, it was what was what was Job's response? It was it was a short time, but a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, fast paced and chaotic. But what what was that like, mate? What just obviously scoring against David Beckham, obviously just playing against some of those stars of Donovan and Co. Well, the only probably regret that I have is I didn't take my shirt off. uh, again it's another like I said this probably goes another chapter in my time at at the Jets that sort of like experience and uh, the team that came LA Galaxy that had stars everywhere all over the park and obviously you named a few of them but uh, it was just good for Newcastle people yeah to be honest Uh, when I have to look back now I think that the Newcastle people deserve that to, to have a full house like that and to have international teams there. I know mm-hmm. obviously before the national teams have come and all this type of stuff, but as a club level, yeah. it was always good to sort of fill out the stadium and it was good times. Uh, it was right, a lot of excitement happening around it. I think, I think from memory we played a week before or a week after the Central Coast. There was a derby on the weekend, so it was all yeah. good times then at that time and uh, I, I, all I remember is pretty much that uh, every single player wanted to, to play that day all of a sudden everybody was fit so which is a good thing you know <laughs> <laughs> um, who's, so, um, did, did you, did you uh, run away did you run away with a shirt I think um, I think I've seen Bridge, Bridgie um, Bridges with uh, David Beckham's shirt I think he must have ended up with that one um, or whatever did you end up with a shirt that night Nah, because I scored, so I kept that one. Funny enough, <laughs> I kept this shirt and I framed it at home. So there you go. Oh, I don't want to give it to anyone. <laughs> I was going to say, did they ask you for it? Even if they asked, I would have given it to them. I was like, I'll score it and you ain't getting it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just rub it on, rub it on Bex a bit. And <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, again, in all seriousness, it was, it was a great time that night. And obviously, they, they came in and it was pretty much an entertainment in terms of like fans enjoying it that's what I said I, I think it was more about people in Newcastle really yes. getting getting up there and having a look at it obviously having an, a club like that and yeah. players like that so and what? I think they had the best probably stay to be honest they got looked after again it's easy because Newcastle it's again like, or maybe it's me but I think they welcome everybody so yeah look as I said and, mate like I, I've been a member of um, of obviously the squadron, obviously NCL, obviously all the supporter groups, the main supporter groups um, since day dot. And yeah, I mean, as I said, you've you've always been um, welcome to us. Obviously coming over and you know photos and everything else. And as I said, you know the biggest thing is it doesn't take much um, to do something like that, and then to get obviously the praise and the recognition from obviously our supporters. It's it's you know we don't expect much. Um, you know, the true supporters don't expect wins every week. We just obviously expect the best performance these guys can put in. And, um, you know, I, I believe, as I said, I believe in, in your three stints, you definitely did that. Um, so I, I, I honestly thank you for the three stints uh, you had. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, it's not over. I might bring my boots back here again. Hey, mate, oh, oh, well, that was my last, <laughs> that was my, honestly, that was my last um, talk, obviously, in regards to, in regards to, um, Bloody the Jets sort of thing. Obviously, you're, you're still young, 30, 34. Um, 34, I'll be 34 soon. 35. And, um, obviously, so you did sort of end up finishing up, obviously, a little bit, we'll say, early. Um, what, what, what was what was the go there? Obviously, there was injuries and so forth. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I think, on the pre-season in 2000, I think 2017. Yeah. It was a long preseason. Did a perfect, felt great, and then first, second game, second minute at home, bang, the knee went, as everyone knows. And then after that, it it sort of it took me good 
15 to 17 months yep. to, to sort of get get yourself going. Yeah. Uh, because obviously of my age and everything else like that. Um, at the time, I never thought that I'm going to finish in terms of, or I'll finish as soon as I, I do my recovery and I'm okay, I'm done after this. But as, as, as I went through my career, I always had a passion and always had an interest in coaching. Um, but as you know, in football, you can't plan in 10, 15, 20 years what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, you got a goal and you sort of keep it in your back pocket and yep. you work towards it. And then if opportunity comes up, then you know, you, you're there to take it, I guess. So as I was going through that period of 17, 17 15 months, it was hard. It was hard in terms of because you want to give everything back to the club because yeah. they obviously showed the you know they, they, they support you and everything like that so in terms of that it's hard it's not hard for me in terms of just for myself but more of a people that sort of believe in you that's yeah. what's probably the hardest part that you can't give them back anything like that yeah and then obviously that was the time where I said instead of me feeling sorry for myself in terms of well how long it's going to take and this and that yeah I started doing my courses and I started looking into it like I'd go down to training session to everywhere actually whatever I could yep. and just watch something and you know I'm, 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 I'm a lot in football not just in football in sport I love it I watch rugby league and all of them you know yep. so I just you know started doing a little bit piece of everywhere and then in the meantime I was doing my courses and then obviously everything is in time I think time and place and I think you got to sort of wait for that opportunity if it ever comes. And then obviously I was lucky enough that I got to meet. I sort of knew him before, but we never had a relationship. And then at the time, Laurie was, just came to the club, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I had a normal relationship with him in terms of, you know, respect, obviously, for what he achieved in a game. And sort of that was there. Yeah. But, you know, the time started to go on and, you know, one day it was him and Mike Jones were there. Mike Jones, he was the coach at the time and then they, they sort of brought up the idea of maybe me moving into coaching. Hmm. Um, I said, look, to be honest, I've always had that, that sort of goal, but it's maybe too early or too late. I'm not too sure, but I said, I'm still doing my badges. Yeah. So again, I just to show you what kind of people are they are you know they, they're willing to work with me or give me the time and then yeah. obviously they believe in me again so it's very simple if it's, if it wasn't for Laurie I wouldn't be where I am today that's that's no secret one uh, two my relationship with him no it goes beyond you know what I mean it's just more it's just, forget about football it's just respect in general yeah um, and like I said when someone does something for me to help me I tried to, to, to repay everything. And that's, that was the same for Newcastle. What Newcastle did for me, I'll try again and again and again to give everything back to them. And, so, and you did in spades. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and then, you know, I started doing the coaching and Laurie, obviously, because he had the lights and everything, he came in and he was helping me a lot. Yeah. Obviously, you, get, you, pick, you pick his brain. Uh, and then, you know, I built a relationship with him just like that. And just in general, about life, you pick up his brain, you know? Yeah. He's been involved in everything and he's been successful at everything. Well, absolutely. You can't then, go past the um, first first uh, coach of the season in the inaugural A-League. Obviously, you can't get much better than that. So, <laughs> uh, If you sit with him and you can talk football to him. <laughs> um, you know, um, if you're in isolation with Murray, yeah. you wouldn't be bored. Let oh, me tell you that much. Oh, 100%. He's actually come in um, when, you were, when we were talking about, obviously, you know, you're still playing and so forth like that. Yeah. Um, He's actually said that he believes Joel Griffiths is looking for players to fill his over 35 squad, um, if you want to whack the boots on. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending who the coach is, I'm not bringing the boots on that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Alex, Alex Evans has come in with some breaking news. Um, the French Ligue 1 is the first league to now officially declare that it is over, with PSG being champions, Marseille and Rennes getting to the Champions League, Lil Remis... Nice to the Europa League. Toulouse and Armains will be relegated. There you go. It's obviously the French League have 
pulled up stumps and everything else. Um, first ones to call it officially. First ones, yeah, obviously to call it officially. As I said, we'll um, so we, we, we wanted to sort of wrap your wrap your brain, brain sorry, as we were talking before you jumped on in regards to the MPL and the you know be, becoming a second le- second tier in the, obviously for the A League and so forth. You've coached at MPL level. You're now the current assistant coach, as we said, of Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, what's your take? What, what do you feel the MPL um, or what Australia needs to get a second tier? Obviously, we're not expecting it to happen overnight. You know, I said myself that you know we're looking at at least five years before something happens. But what's your take on it, mate? What, what do you think the, that Australian football needs? Look, I'm not an expert. I'm yeah, not an expert, but um, it's 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 uh, it would be nice for the players, obviously, to get a second division and so on. So then there's more games involved, and you you play for promotion or relegation. That's clear. Yeah. Again, uh, I'm not here to see it and say do this, do that, do that. Uh, for me, if there's a game in the street, I'll go game in the street and be try to get involved because it's just I love the game. Yeah. So. Uh, for me, it's more of the getting the youngsters. How can we get more opportunity? How can we put them more games through, similar to the Europe, and then obviously bring them up? So the more games you have and the meaning of them, the promotion relegation, it, it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you have a lot of people on NPL level that are very, very passionate and love the game and will do anything for it. Yeah. Um, now, the time frame, when will it happen, this and that, again, like I said, I'm not an expert, but... It'd be it'd be nice for the players to get that 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 sort of competition going, so they can play for something in terms of promotion relegation, and the similar to the Europe or around the world where there's a lot at stake. Um, and in saying that, obviously, like I said, you get the second division, then everybody's more involved in it, and a lot of doors are starting to open in terms of player opportunity again. Um, then you can bring more young players through. And yeah. Get them to the age 20, 22, and they're getting games, games, yep. games, games. I think that's very important. Absolutely. I remember when I was growing up, I was in the youth and we were playing games just before first grade, for example. Yeah, you know, that was sort of at the time when I was coming through. That wasn't yep. a bad thing either for a young kid to have a look at that and go, you know what? I want to be there. Now you get daily clubs playing against MPO in a FA Cup. Yep. That's also, you know, you can see there, these things there, and there's a lot of excitement. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully they look into it and then they can sort of bring the second division or however you want to call it. Yep. So that if everyone is more involved in it and the game just grows, we just want to see the game grow. So, oh, 100%. So, you're, so, you reckon, so the Jets obviously have now moved down to obviously the Sydney. Um, MPL, I think they're in. I think we we're talking yeah, three, the did three or something in third division. Obviously, do you think that that's the right spot for obviously the Jets to be? Like, do they should they be in a competition like that? I think my personal opinion. I think it'll be um, a lot more beneficial for them in competition. Um, that's no disrespect, to obviously the MPL in Newcastle. I just think um, obviously the oh, money... for me, for me, the way I would look at it. Again, I'm not an expert in division and this yeah. and that, but I, I look at it more on, a, on the other side of it where it's more games maybe or, mm. or different type of games and the younger yeah. players getting that or other players are getting that depend on whoever it is. It doesn't have to be just young players, but Correct. the players are just getting different type of games. Maybe they're travelling, maybe this. So, you know what I mean? It's a bit yeah. of a, you get into a routine. Yeah. So that's a, again, it's another learning process. You know, it's a long process, but it, to probably make it at the top is a big process, a long process. And, and you know, whether you're 22 or 23 doesn't mean you've just made it at that age, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, so no. I, I think whether it's a Division 3 or 4 or there, I wouldn't look into that because I would look, prefer to look on the other side of it where you probably play competitive games or games yeah. outside your comfortable area. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I think I think it will be interesting to see them here. To be yeah. honest, uh, I was going to get down watch them when when he started, but obviously with all this happened, so yeah. Uh, again, I, like I said, I follow the club, and yeah. I think it will be good. I think it's good, and hopefully, then from there they can just keep moving up. Yeah, look, absolutely. Before we go any further, we um, 
we uh, we're, we're going to draw a. Obviously, we've got a giveaway of a. Um, obviously, I'm going to give up one of my Jets signed shirts. Um, we had a bit of dramas, obviously, on the Jets page the last couple of days, and um, I said I'd draw it at nine o'clock, obviously, and we had, you know, obviously you came in a little bit late. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly draw this, but what we're going to do is we're going to get you to pick a number. That's all we want you to do. Um, we've got a spreadsheet of one, uh, two, how many? There are 80, 87 names in it. Give me a sec. I'll pull this up. Yep. Um, I need to go into studio mode. I can't even pick the shirts up. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. There we go. Why are you quickly doing that? Um, oh, but yeah, as I said, guys, I've got, as I said, we had a bit of dramas with a signed shirt, so I figured I would donate one of my, well, one of a couple that I've brought in. Um, as I said, that one there was early, so I think it was 2011, 12. That one there was actually signed. Got Laurie to sign it, get that one signed for me. Um, at Ballarat, Laurie, if you remember that one. I remember it. 14, 15 Whoop, that's season. That's what we want. We want that one. And I believe that one there is the 0910 shirt. So you got you got one of you can pick one of those three, um, which I'm gonna obviously donate donate off my own back with all the dramas and everything else that's happened in the last couple of days. So once Ben's got the sheet up, if everyone can they see that, can they? Yep, here is the sheet. All right, yeah. Don't worry, Lebby. Lebby definitely can't see the sheet. He ain't got YouTube and Facebook up, mate. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, yeah. So what was the numbers again? So he's got to pick a random number between 1 and 87. 1 and 87. So I, I have to pick a number, yeah? Yeah. Or you have to just pick one number between 1 and 87. Go ahead, mate. mate see, it's very easy. I, I, I thought you would, yeah. What's, what was my first number at the club? If you remember that, you'll pick that. Let's see how much you know me. <laughs> I believe it'd be 14. Keep guessing. Oh, really? Oh, no, he was 14, but oh, shit. I think it was 14 at the end. He must have been 14 at the end. I thought it was 14 through the whole thing. I thought he just kept the 16. same. 16. 16. 16, you weren't far off. Number, Number 16. 16. It was 16, 14, 11. 14 or 11. There you so go. We, go with the we go with the first one. Go with the first one. There we go. Number 16. Number 16 is Danny McDougal. Danny McDougal. There we go. Danny McDougal. Um, Newcastle Jets. There it is. Newcastle Jet Supporters Group, I believe um, at least some of the admins are definitely in here. Mm -hmm. It's um there it Ricky's is. Here. Danny McDougal. Ricky there. Ricky T's here, beautiful. He's the one who runs the page. Danny McDougal, there you go. No dramas at all. Congratulations. Um I'll speak to you and or Ricky, speak to me or Ricky. We'll work it out afterwards. On our end. Yeah. Um and you can pick one of the shirts and I'll I'll, I'll post it up to you. No dramas at all. So, other than that, thank you very much for that, lad. No, no problem. All good. So, we'll quickly quickly go on for a little bit and um, get you back to, obviously, Daddy Daycare, as you were saying earlier. <laughs> I'm sure they're in bed so by now. They'll probably start to go to sleep anyway. Yeah, so. I hope so. I hope so. Mine, actually, mine should be in bed by now. <laughs> um, so, obviously, we'll talk We'll talk a little bit. Obviously, we're talking MPL and um, so forth. Like, we, we've seen the, the new panel, we'll call it. Mark yeah. Viduka and Skoko. Skoko, I think Bosnich is on there as well, and to obviously try and come up with things to improve, obviously the game in Australia and everything else. Um, what have you? Like, what's one of the biggest things you've seen? Obviously, you've been around a bit. You've you've tasted pretty much. Um, obviously, you've tasted Asia. Obviously, with Western Sydney and everything else. Um, obviously, the competition grow through from the start. Obviously, to um, pretty much current as we are. So. What's some of the biggest things you've known? Um, what, what are the, yeah, what, what's changed, mate? What, what do you think's changed in the game? Um, I think uh, if you look at it, uh, there's a lot of signs come into 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 the game. Yep. Uh, the players and, and you know they get looked after more in terms of that, and you can see everything now. You can sort of monitor everything. Yep. Uh, as in back, obviously, even when I started, I don't, I don't think we had any of it to be honest. Yeah. Um, social no, social you, drinks down at the pub on on, on after games and so forth, <laughs> <laughs> or other people's pool. Pretty close, free barbecue, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, look, I think that's obviously it's coming to play more, and uh, you see, 
obviously younger players trying to come in and, and have a go at it. Even even back when I started, we, we had sort of younger coming in. Now there's still that age, between 18 to 22, you've got players, especially in A-League, that most of the A-League clubs have them now. Uh, but probably the biggest one for me is that science stuff that's come in. Yeah. Like I said, monitoring the players and all that, that's probably something we didn't have back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, I, I think that's that's probably, for me anyway, in my opinion, well, where I was and where I am today. Well, that's I think, I think, one big one. I think another one I think we can obviously definitely talk about, as I said, you're at Western Sydney at the moment. Um, they, the I don't know if you watched the uh, YouTube clip with obviously Viduka and Schwarzer when they were talking about the game and everything and the A-League in general, they were talking about, uh, like, training facilities was a major topic of theirs where yeah. they believe that a lot of the A-League clubs are below par in regards to their facilities. Um, they obviously didn't go in and name anybody in regards, but you guys have just built a brand-new um, facil- training facility and everything oh, else. And magic. Yeah, Borat, obviously. Uh, Borat done I a good... Think, good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's... Uh... <laughs> You have all everything for starting from the academy and up. Um, it, the fields are amazing. Like I said, I think as a player now, in terms of that, you you definitely have everything. Yeah. But but in saying that, when I was coming through, I had that in Newcastle. The two fields that we use there for training. Yeah. They always perfect perfect condition. Um, I mean, you don't have to have all the time 10, 10 20 of them or whatever, but. Hmm. I was lucky enough that Newcastle, obviously I was in Newcastle and here in Wanderers in terms of that, and I was lucky enough to have both good fields and good good facilities in both clubs. Um, you know, you can improve it, of course, always something better, more and more, but yeah. when you look at it, if you look at a jet setup, I'll, I'll take it any day because, again, okay, maybe I'm being biased because I'm, I feel so comfortable there and I, I grew up there, everything. Yeah. But the, the two fields there, the uni and the gym and the swimming pool and the, there's office now. I mean, that's, that's all you can ask as a player. Yeah, um, yeah. You've got access to everything pretty much in there. So if we're going to look at it, if we're going to compare with Europe in terms of that, yeah, okay, that's a bit different. But if we look at it there, I, yeah. think, I think they have everything. Yeah, absolutely. Ben, have you got a comment there, I think, from I think Alex? I do. We've got one from here from Alex Evans going, Lads, can I just say how professional Ricky T has handled this whole situation regarding the shirt drama? Worth a mention. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're definitely going to put that on um, once we finish with Lads and t- get really into that and talk a bit about it. But, um, yeah, absolutely, mate. Obviously, you've you've done absolutely brilliant in a bad situation. Um, and, as I said, I'm, I'm just here to sort of help you guys out and anything you guys need in the future don't hesitate to ask me i'm more than happy to give you guys a hand as i said we we're just here to obviously make sure that you know you guys as jets fans mainly um get some interesting content and as i said we can't thank labby and obviously the the fans and obviously the ex-players we've had on so far and current mm-hmm. players laurie mckinna for jumping on and obviously having a bit of a chat with us in regards to obviously their playing career and what what's next for them and so forth but um but yeah, obviously your your facil- the facilities there at Western Sydney are obviously ridiculous. They they, they look absolutely mean. they look Mickey Mouse. Um, as I said, bloody George Jesse done a bit of a promo there, which was a bit of a laugh. If you haven't seen that, Borat. <laughs> oh, he's brilliant. Don't, love him. I love. I still love him. George Jesse, mate. Yeah, he's an absolute absolute gem. And um, mate, he he must be an absolute pain in the ass at training, surely. <laughs> No, I think I've I've got to know him for the last four years now, so yeah. it's it's good, you know. But yeah, Serial pest. again, you see, everywhere he's been, he's been a winner. To be oh, honest, yeah. he's Absolutely. such a competitive guy and and a, and a good guy, very very good, down to earth, no ego. It's what you see, what you get with him, and you know he'll do anything for the team. Uh, simple as that. So I think he's he's a funny guy. Yeah. Again, it's what you see in a camera when you watch him. It's exactly him and like that in a normal life. Mm. Uh, yeah. And he's a, he's a professional. And again, he's been in Europe. He was a winner. He came back here. He was a winner with victory. Yeah. Obviously, with Newcastle, he made it all the way to the grand final. Yeah. And now he's come here. So, at Bondworth. So, everywhere he's been, he's had success. And, you know, you can say, okay, what's maybe once or twice, but every club he's been, actually, if you look at him, 
he's been a success. He's had a successful career so far. Yep. So it is good to have run. Absolutely. As I said, you've got. Um, there's, there's no doubt. Obviously, the success that obviously West Sydney have had, and as I said, it's a. You know, I, I, I could sit here and talk about the Jets twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, um, and try and talk ourselves up. Obviously, and you know, obviously from the you know the roller coaster that we've had. Um, since since the start of the A League, but the the success obviously Western Sydney have had is can't be you know, without question. They've done so well. They've grand finals in their inaugural seasons and early Asian, on Asian and Champions Asian League. You know what was what was that like, mate? Obviously, you went to Western Sydney and they fell in love with you. Obviously, you're on bloody billboards and Christ knows what and all that. And obviously, he's he's done so well in Asia and. Um, the likes of Kovic, obviously, which who was at the Jets, and um, Top of Stanley, obviously, who's still currently here. And um, you know, what was that like, mate? Obviously, going that far, and you know, did you yeah, was, obviously, obviously, built. you've got to believe in yourself that you know, yes, we can make it to the final. But was it a pinch yourself moment? Did you did you really think you could go that far? Look, I think first of all, the first day we went there, there was not even a change. Room. Yeah. when the club started so yeah. it goes to show where the club is today yeah. and the people that obviously been behind it and then obviously slowly slowly they started to build a team and as you mentioned a few of my former players former teammates and obviously some of them are still playing obviously we you know this just grew and grew from day to day game to game and then obviously there were the first year was the grand final and then obviously the premiership and then Obviously, that led into the Champions League, and yep. when you start the Champions League in, in Asia, you you sort of your first target is just pretty much to to get your first win, and then obviously you try to do as best you can in the group stages. Mm, yeah, uh, it's such a difficult trip or competition where that's where you want to be because that's mm. where the best is of Asia is, but it's such a difficult for the Aussie teams because you you traveling on a 10, 14 hour flights and a different climate and all these things that, that make it so difficult with a, such a limited small number of players. Mm. I think, I remember, I think that we played a Chinese team, Guangzhou Overground, and they had like 30, 40 or more players. Yeah. And they were just, well, I remember watching the game, we did the video, and there's a totally different team, one game, and the next game is a different team. So, yeah. and then you know, we had pretty much just a whatever you saw there on the field, 20 players and whatever it was. Yeah. So it, it, it is very, very difficult. But as you go through the group stages, you know, you go, okay, the group stage is done and then you go to the next one and then go, okay, the next one home and away. You get a little field and that's when you probably start to go, you know, you could be close here, yeah? Because mm-hmm. quarterfinals, semifinals of that competition, you know, it, it's, it's massive. Yeah. It's massive, but... But then again, because we basically had nothing to lose, yep. that also plays in your favour. Because uh, the other teams, sort of, especially in Asia, when they had big players, I remember, I think, Gerald Nino was one day, one time there, and they, they, you know, they think that, okay, we, there's an Aussie team coming here, and they're not going to give us a fight, but obviously we were built on that, that never give up, and uh, the club is built on that too, so... Um, like, like I said, once once we sort of started to go in our run, then the home games here, it was crazy. Uh, the home games here, the fans, I mean, yes, you saw that in A-League during the competition during the year, but I think in Champions League, they went to another level. Mm. Um, and they, they were 12 men, they lifted us. Yeah. Uh, I think we played the Korean team at home, and we needed to win by, by 2-0, and I think we just scored late, late in the second half, and there's a they, they were the ones, they were the reasons. Obviously, we were playing for that because mm. you just had to lift. You don't feel any tiredness. You don't feel anything. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I remember. I think we flew back here on a Friday morning. I think it was from China, and then back Saturday we were playing here at home again. And the crowd was the one that lifted us. Uh, pretty yeah. simple as that. And I again, know. they they. As much as we did on the field, I think they they did their part also, and then everything sort of came together. And yeah. obviously, the end is uh, you know something something special. 
what happened in Saudi Arabia, and then obviously when we got here that morning at the or night time at the airport here, and yep. it was crazy, crazy scenes here, and something that you know you you remember for the rest of your life, I guess. Absolutely, there's no there's no taking that away from obviously the the, the red block they. They, they, yeah, you know, I said they obviously they do they do a great job down there, and I've um I've been to I've been to a few way days down there, and they don't make it easy. They make it very difficult, and they make you make you very uneasy, and um so forth. And as I said, it's you know part of the gig and everything else. It's no different to us when fans come to us. We want to make them feel uneasy, and or when we go to the coast, when we go to the coast, coast the coast is just different, something different else. It's you know what I mean. It's nothing nothing better than going down on buses and buses and trains, obviously, and smacking the coast like we did obviously a couple 18. of seasons ago yeah <laughs> nothing nothing better um sort of makes you not want to go home that night afterwards put it that way but um but obviously yeah he's got he's got there in the end he's um done the unthinkable and I, I can't i can't imagine anyone in australia whether they love you know like um support western sydney or not you've got to give it off to them and you know they pretty much done the um they did the unthinkable, unthinkable and they they beat off a giant and um what was what happened afterwards was a bit surreal like, like the whole spitting incident that happened and everything else i can't remember if you were involved in that were you involved in that or was that someone else no i think the the uh, the moment you talk about was i think spiranovich spiranovich, yeah, I, think spiranovich yeah. I think it was one of the star strikers I yeah think he plays for a national team yep yeah, grub. Um, obviously, at that time, they they start to realise that you know we're not just kids anymore. We're not just a team that's just gonna yeah. put the red carpet for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's simple, almost so. like it's almost like the the Australian teams are a bit underestimated by the by the other Asian teams. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah you could say that because obviously uh, there's a certain money that they they put in there or the players get it and they they think that they it's sort of bigger than you or whatever, but yeah. in the end of the day, it's 11 v 11 on the field. That's yeah. right, absolutely. And then, yeah, okay, money. I don't think money can buy a success. Yep. Um, yeah. So, you know, we were we were called rejects, the players. Yeah. Us. Um, and for me, that was never a thing that you go, oh, okay, I'm going to motivate myself because I was called a reject. Yeah. But what I'm trying to get is that when you're playing and you're giving your 110 percent, I think they will go past someone else who's on the other side who's got more talent. Yep. Yeah. Um, At the end of the day, you guys had an unbelievable, unbelievable side that year. Like, um, you know, Bridge um, was on fire. Um, he was he was doing unbelievable things. Obviously, left the Jets, and I don't think I don't think many Newcastle Jets fans will ever forgive him for that. Um, <laughs> we, we we took that one pretty hard. Um, I I definitely took that one hard. I think I think I think we could honestly say I think Joel was in here before, but if if he stayed, you know, he scored the winner obviously, and there's now so much controversy as in Joel Griffiths is the actual goal scorer of our grand final victory, um, just because he left. But I think if if Bridge stayed, it would have been very tight to be the king of New- who would be the king of Newcastle right now. Mm. <laughs> oh, I think. Because, I think it's an easy one for me. Yeah. Oh, easy one. Who would it be? I think. I think you have to give us a Joel. Nah. There's another one. Negotiable. We found, we found another one on Joel's payroll. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's just a fact. It's, he deserves it. He, is, he suits him. He has to take it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> there. There is definitely no one other than Joel Griffiths. No, there's no one like him. He, um. I still can't believe. It. I wonder if he gave O'Donovan tips when O'Donovan got sent. Um, we were talking about it last week. Obviously, he got sent for the ten weeks again in the oh, grand yeah, final. Yeah. But the one he got against the Central Coast, the Central Coast against um, bloody uh, who was it? I can't remember what it was off the top of my head now. But he copped ten. He copped eight weeks for that. I think in the in, in the same season, Joel Griffiths took out the linesman. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, took out the linesman like, and got nothing. Yeah, full bush came over. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell?" Um, actually, no, I think that was in the OA. Actually, my apologies. I think that was in the OA grand final season. Mm. Yeah, when Joel Griffiths took out the linesman and then Vuka, Vuka got sent for nearly eternity, three months. I think he got banned for so. Um, but yeah, look, mate, like what? 
I think Laurie's had a question to ask him. I can't remember if it's there. I think he asked me on the phone. He said to ask you about um your uh what was it three days a week? I think it was coffee. Your coffees in the morning. For M- M- <laughs> what, what was the, what was the go there? I knew I knew something like this was coming up. <laughs> That's what we're all gonna come at. <laughs> he said to ask you about it. Apparently, um, yeah, same, three days a week or something like that. So we found somebody that drinks more coffee than me. <laughs> well, put it, put it, put it this way: I think he misses that time. That's simple as that. That's why he's bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, look, we we had the relationship, and obviously, we we both morning people. You know, we woke up very early. And yeah. we, we sort of were, were were training in the morning early, and then. Obviously, it was always a coffee and a tea there. It was a good service. <laughs> and, and he couldn't complain for that. That, that. that was probably the best part of his day. <laughs> Rocking up to his coffee. <laughs> yeah, his, his tea. His I tea. had the coffee. Oh, you had the coffee, you had the, he had the tea. Yeah. Shandy, I, I needed to have my coffee to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not, a, I'm not a morning person. Right, I think he said it was about 7.15 by then. He's probably had three coffees well before that, so... It'd be almost, yeah, between, almost between shandy time. Between 7.30 it was always the same service. <laughs> and 7.31 it becomes shandy time. Absolutely. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he even had the service when he was playing. <laughs> what have you, have you, have you got? I, your... I miss my cup of tea at 7.10 in the morning. There he is, he's still in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> he misses his cup of tea. Have you got any dirt on him, mate? you got any dirt on Laurie? What What was any anything to anything that he couldn't go without or anything that strikes you? As a, as a funny something of him. Just a dream up. Dan, it's all you see what you get. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. He's, he's very real. Yeah. Uh, you know, people think that, you know, if he does an interview or he's whatever, no, he's exactly the same. Oh. He, he's, it's very hard to pick on something on him because, yeah. again, he's like real. He's so he's just there. The open. And then, yeah, but, but I spend a lot of time with him, that's for sure. And yeah. definitely, definitely, that's what I've noticed in terms of that. And hmm. yeah, it doesn't nah. matter where you have in life or who you are in life. I think if you're real, you'll go a long way. And I think that's what he's got. He's he's, he's there, and the, yeah. he treats people the way he wants to be treated. And yeah, he, he, he you know he looks after everybody. And there's not a person there at the club that could say anything else. Uh, well, think, there's a staff. I think, think that's. I think player. that's pretty much. Yeah, I think that's really it. And like, we we would have to be, and I I say nearly every time we're on the podcast with him and everything else. You know, we can't thank him enough for just jumping on. It's just a matter of even you know, short notice. You know, mate, you want to jump on? Bang! You know, as long as if he's not flat out, he's always um, there for us. And as as obviously as a massive Jets fan, obviously been there since day dot. Um, he is by far. The, one of the best things that's ever happened to the club, um, mm. as you as you said, mate, he, he he does anything for that, anything he possibly can for that club. Whether it's obviously you know donating stuff, you know shirts and Time. tickets. To, time's the biggest thing, you know. The amount of I think, time. I think there was a year, the first year when I retired, yeah, when I finished the first year. I think he just came in and boy, he said, "Oh, we're going to Paul McCoy Tari up there," and I said, oh, "Okay," and then went up there and they just. Just him being him in front of kids, in front of people out there, and you, you see that and you go, wow. Yeah. Uh, that's probably one thing that, that sticks with me in my head that you know, just jumps in a car and goes out there and yeah. you know puts people smiles, you know, smile oh. in the face pretty much. And that's special. You know, that's and he special, even yeah. puts a training session for the kids there. And yeah. It's it's things that you don't, you know, people wouldn't see that or no, but he doesn't do it because. He wants people to talk about. It. He just does it because he knows that there is a could be a player there, or could be a fan, a Jets fan, or a football yep. fan, yep. and he just wants to please them. So you know, little things like that, and you go, you think again. Like I said, it's real. It's him. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I see it. You know, I mean, like I remember our trip to Adelaide. You know, I mean, like we went to, went Adelaide away, and um, we were sitting there. Obviously, we're keen to you know watch the boys play and that. And he's, it was just a message. He's like, hey, mate, you know. There's, there's a couple of tickets at the ground or whatever it is. Just take what you need and give out the rest. And there was a shitload of tickets there. There was, I think it was like 15 or 20 tickets. You know, there's just, only like six of us. There's only six of us. Just just left over, obviously, you know, for obviously the club obviously gets a few tickets and so forth. And um, depending on where they go, obviously more tickets get used than others. And there wasn't ma- many obviously being used. And 
We actually just, you know, gave them out to obviously people yeah. that were lining up to yeah. buy tickets. Now, they're yeah. all Adelaide fans pretty well, but, um, you know, just Jets people, obviously, before, but before they, re- you know, thought, when they stopped real, like, you know, we're not here to try and rip you off, or they, they, they are real tickets. Um, you know, look, the, you know, Laurie's given us a few extra tickets to just to give out because, you know, we're, we're good. It's little things like that. As you said, the kids, you'll do anything for the kids. Um he doesn't doesn't mind making a goose of him looking like a goose. Obviously, he got up there with oh that um, pink suit that oh the pink oh, suit that, that was pink cute. Suit. But no, I was more thinking about um when he got up with um Joey. Yeah, um, I know which one you're talking Joey? about. The in front of the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah Joey there and so forth in the bloody friggin' the chain, the yeah. chain and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just great, you know. Like it's what CEO and you know and of any A League club, you know. Well, I, the way I never done yeah, stuff the, like the way I speak to it to to my I've got a lot of friends that are Melbourne Victory supporters and the first thing I say to them is do you know the name of your CEO? Absolutely. And half of them can't even tell me. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, you, you just everyone knows who he is. Um and that's it whether they they you know we'll talk Perth and Brisbane and stuff like that and obviously who aren't around obviously the coast and Sydney. Um they all know who he is. Everyone knows who he is and what yeah. what he does and, and it, it was the same. It was the same when I well, obviously when I finished and obviously he was helping me with the coaching. It was the same. He never missed a session. You know, people thought, Oh, you know, he won't turn up into a session or he won't turn up into a game. He was always there the first one. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, just little things like that. And you go, you know what? He, he really loves it. He wants to be here and he wants to help or, you know. So, again, if I go back to my song, I, I was lucky. I was lucky because to, to share things like that, to see things like that, you know, he, money can't buy that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as uh, I said, we're not. We're, the biggest thing is, guys, you know, obviously, for, I have no idea. I'm sure there's people in here who aren't really Jets fans and so forth. As I said, we're not trying to sit here and, you know, try and claim that we... Yeah, you know, we have the best CEO or anything like that. That's it's, a given. it's just it, you know. We we wish that on everyone else. Yeah, you know I mean, we would love the 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 Western Sydney Wanderers fans and stuff like that to be able to do that. And if they get that opportunity and so forth, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just amazing. Obviously, it's the first CEO we've had at the club that's definitely done stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. Nathan Tinkler and co would never have done anything like that. No. Um, you know, and You're to some people, upside. to some people, it's just about money and, you know, let's just, you know, they want the money to get into the club and it's all about the club. Yeah. As in a business asset. Laurie definitely doesn't see it as that. Um, yeah, he just, it's all about the fans and everything else because at the end of the day, as he said on plenty of our podcasts, it's what it's all about. Yeah. It's all about the fans. Without With the no fans, fans, you have nothing. No club. You have nothing without them. So, um, I think he's gone pretty quiet. Must have must have gone and grabbed some tissues. I think, Labby. I think you've. He's <laughs> probably gone. He's probably gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the wife, the wife, the wife, the wife's just gone, rolled over, and gone to sleep on him. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Nah, look, mate. As I said, it's been an absolute pleasure. And we do thank you very much for jumping on with us and giving out, giving us up a little bit of your time and everything else. Um, we we hope to see you, obviously. Back in Newcastle, in obviously some shape or form, um, whether it's coaching us and at some point, or yeah, you know. well, he'll be back as the assistant coach of the Western Sydney Wanderers. Yeah, but we'll give him shit for that. No, <laughs> only for not only for ninety minutes. <laughs> we'll give him crap for that for sure. It's, it's, it'll happen. <laughs> um, but I've got just got a couple of quick questions for you, mate, before we let you go. Yeah. What? Where, where do you see yourself with the coaching role? Obviously, you you said. Um, you know, you've got a knack. Of, you know, we all feel you've got a knack for it. And Western Sydney Wanderers and Laurie obviously have got the faith in you to that they think you've got it, mate. Where do you want to be? Do you want to coach? You know, obviously in the A League. Do you really want to get to Europe? Um, obviously, it's a you know we're talking long term and so forth. You've got, obviously you've got a lot of learning and a lot of um, you know a lot of time to obviously to learn your trade and everything else. And I'm sure you'll get plenty of chances been doing that with obviously great coaches that come through the A-League and so forth. But well, he's, he's under one of the best assistant managers in Australian football in JP. Well, absolutely. Yeah, look, I, I, I think you always have a goal, then, but I think what's important is that you don't rush. What's important is that you learn. What's important is you pick up everyone's brain and then and you take it each, each day. Mm. Uh, you don't think too far ahead. 
that's pretty yeah. much the first one. The yeah. second one is the day I stop learning. That's probably the day I want to be involved in coaching. Yeah. Mm. Um, sure. But it is obviously a goal. The way I'm going at the moment, uh, I don't think that far ahead. But I think yeah. of it just how can I learn? What can I learn? Where can I learn? Uh, that's probably the biggest ones and I was like that as a player there's yeah, no difference yeah. I think uh, player is the same you start your career as a player you're young you don't have experience yeah. you start to work you start to see who's where what can you learn and coaching is no different the only difference in coaching is you have to care sort of for people more than just for yourself <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much what, what I'm learning and yeah. um, in terms of having a long term plan you have the goal, yes, mm. but I think if you rush, if you just think that you know everything, then that's what the day you probably won't last a Absol- week. Absolutely. Um, there's so much learning to do, and but that's in general life. I think it's not just football. At the end I of the day, you, you've got if you rush, if you rush in everything, then uh, yeah, um, absolutely, you ain't gonna get anywhere. But in saying that, people, when I had my first child, and before I had my, there was a daughter, and uh, uh, the doctor asked me, "Are you ready? How how ready are you?" I said, "I'm not ready, but I will be ready." Mm, yeah. So uh, everything is same in life is the same. You're yeah. never ready for anything. You're never hundred percent. You get high on everything, but you just take it up and you go on with it, and you know you you make the best out of the situation that is. Yeah. I knew no, nothing about changing nappies. But now all of a sudden I'm an expert. <laughs> you mean by that? You know what I mean? One. But uh, it's other things that you, you know you, you can prepare yourself for everything, but you you don't know what you're getting yourself onto you in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, it's important that I just learn and I stay grounded and you know just keep keep doing my time and just seeing things, look things, and see people that have been there, have done it, and yeah. obviously. In saying that, you still want to be your own person, um, and I'm, I'm definitely that. Uh, in the end of the day, you, you are your own who you are. You can't change. Um, Absolutely. So, Absolutely, yeah. mate. At the end of the day, mate, as I said, you, you, you're, 30, you're nearly 35. You've got you've got plenty of time. Um, obviously, as I said, there's still people playing it at your age. So um, for you to be where you are now, um, Obviously, learning off as Ben said, one of the best assistant coaches um, in GP. Um, JP, 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 JP. Um, you know, it's as like I said, you've got plenty of time. Obviously, as as we we're talking about Laurie as well, I'm sure if you were to ring Laurie, yeah, I mean he'd be the first, you know, more than happy to obviously give you tips and everything else or any advice that he's, you know, um, and so forth. Which obviously, again, you're very lucky to have. Um, so as I said, mate. You know, best best of luck, obviously, with everything you do in the coaching world, and hopefully, um, we'll see you, co- you know, see you back, see see you coaching. Obviously, we'll still stay, st- see you coaching in the A League, obviously, um, first, and who knows, it could be overseas and doing things like obviously Ange Postacoglu and so forth. But as I said, mate, early days, take baby steps, and um, <laughs> we'll see what yeah, happens. I've got a lot of babies at home, so I'm learning. There that. you go, mate. Exactly <laughs> right. So, um, yep. <laughs> The other two questions I've got for you are very quick ones. Obviously, who is who would be the best player um, you have played with in your in your footballing career, and who's 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 the best player you've ever played against? You said this is a quick one. This is probably the hardest one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you've definitely played because um, what you were there with you were there with Heskey um, and so forth. Uh, I think I think it's hard to pick. I'll tell you why because each of them have offered something different. Uh, yeah. I, I was with her uh, there. I was Franny Jeffers was there. Yeah. Then I was with Shinji Oda and yeah, Sydney, yeah. If we're talking about foreigners yeah, like that, uh, like outside players, Aussie. Yeah, no, um, any, any any player, maybe. They don't even have to be the best. They don't even have to be you know, like. Obviously, as said, you said best is obviously you know they're they're all talented. They're playing in in the A League, and then a lot of them have played in Europe and so forth. The ones that you would possibly choose, um, even 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 if it's not the best play, just someone that's really stood out technically, just technically gifted. Something that's just gone wow. Yeah, you know I mean, like 
Well, if, if, if we're talking about in terms of just as a player or, and everything like yeah. that, for me, it has to be a guy that I've changed pretty much everything and will be top of Stanley. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, we had, funny enough, you know, we were in Newcastle and back to Wanderers and back to Newcastle, so ended up together there. And then a lot of history, a lot of success together. And just his professionalism and the leader, you know, a true leader. Uh, you know, you have different type of leaders. And, He's one of them that gets on with his job in Leeds, by yeah. example. Yeah. And he's not one of them that will shout or this and that, but very, very intelligent guy. And yeah, I can't speak highly of him. Can't what? speak highly of him. Oh, mate, we, yeah, he's. You've heard that one. He's a gun, yeah. I think I think a lot of people that we've had on. and um, The only and... thing probably I'd say is we only went fishing once, and he's a pretty good fisherman, so that's probably how we go to that. Another one that's probably went more, fishing. more than once. I was going to say, he's not the first one who's brought up his fishing fishing skills. He could Joe be, did. He could be the new ET when he's finishing career. He could be the new Andrew Edenhausen fishing show. Um, I only went once with him and that was geez, it. Rex, stand aside. <laughs> Rex, stand nah, aside. Uh, in, in all seriousness, it was a... Uh, yeah, something... Again, huge, huge respect for it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. One of the boys, Ricky's popped in and said, surely the goat gets a mention. Um, uh, Hoffy. <laughs> Yeah, how, how does Hoffy rate in you? Is he oh, rating your top ten, mate? <laughs> yeah, hundred. Not, I wouldn't say top ten. I'd say top five, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's a gun. He's a good player. Hoffy's he's a, he's another special person, and and being a local boy there, yeah, he knows what the area is and what the club is. So, oh yeah, yeah, he's he's there too. Absolutely. So, what's the last? So the last one we said obviously was the best. One of the best players you played against. Um, obviously I said <laughs> nothing make it really easy. You've, you played in Asia, and I'm sure there was a few guns, obviously, over there when Western Sydney fought. But is there's one standout. Obviously, you got Del Pierro's and stuff like that. But there's, there's one standout, as I said, just technically gifted. Someone that just stood back and just went, wow. Uh, <laughs> making him think. Making him think. That's good. He's played with plenty of talent. <laughs> probably probably the boy the boy that was a Todd when he was a dog driver by the Paulinha, the Brazilian midfielder oh um yeah what, um, he, yeah. he played for the national team and then he was a Tottenham for a little bit and then obviously moved to China he's probably the one yeah. I played actually with him in Poland too for a year oh really so he'd be the one that when we played him in Champions League he was yeah yeah, he was something like a machine he just because obviously when I played with him in Poland he was young yeah obviously yeah young seeing and... him after 6-7 years Yep. He was something different, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, everyone else will try and track down the name or if Levy, Levy thinks of it later. We'll, um, yeah, it'd be Paulinho. He's the one that went Paulinho. to yep. Poland, back to Brazil, Brazil to England, and then obviously moved, made the move to China. Paulinho. Uh, Paulinho. The name Paulinho. <laughs> Not Paul. He played in Poland. Um, but yeah, well, there you go. Obviously, yeah, obviously yeah, it's a, it'd be hard to pick. He played obviously yeah, here we go. some absolute guns and currently at um Gangzhou. Currently at Gangzhou. What's he what's he repping now? He's only thirty one. He's he's been around Tottenham there. Um, yeah, he yeah. was a young boy when he was in Poland, he was very really young. Yeah, he's at uh, Lodz Lodz yeah, Corinthians Lodge. Tottenham. We were in the same club. Yeah, right, yeah, there you go, yeah. Yeah. He was at Barcelona there in two thousand seventeen, eighteen. Yes, then he made his move again there yeah, before he went to China. I think they ended up yeah. in China. Tottenham, yeah. Guangzhou, Evergrande, then, yeah, then back, back to back Barcelona, to then back. Yeah. Um, so then... he's probably the one that stands out for me, definitely. Yeah, right. There you go. Well, there you go. There you go. An absolute gun. Um, we're gonna leave, we're gonna wrap it up there, mate. We'll let you go. Um, it, as I said, mate, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on and talk a little bit of football and. Um, obviously, life. Bit, yeah, life in general. What you're up to now, as you said, life, life's pretty hard at the moment. There's so many people, player-wise, obviously in limbo and not really knowing where their futures lie, and the A League in general not really knowing where where it lies at the moment. And um, you know, we thank you, thank you heaps for taking a little bit of time out. Um, I think Alex had one last question in there, which we saw. No uh, what have we got? Can you can you ask Labby how he rates the Newcastle Youth NPL? So this will be the last, the, yeah, last question, mate. How, how do you rate the Newcastle? Not, not. I'm guessing not so much the Jets in general. The just the Newcastle MPL youth system. What, what's the youth system like, mate? I'd say the the club when 
Bom, então vamos de, de Edgeworth Eagles foi misturar. Yeah. Uh, Lord, uh, would see a lot of youngsters coming through from there. Yeah. Um, there's a guy there, obviously you guys know him, and he's still a coach there, Damien Zane. Yeah. yeah. Um, got a lot of time for him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, yes, winning championship and stuff like that, yeah, all good, but I think if you just speak to him, outside yeah. football, you, you sort of get an idea what, what, why the club is like that. Yeah. And, and that's probably for me that, that, that sort of department or that area there that stood up for me every time I, I went there or yeah. I sort of got, got to see them. Yeah. Uh, just the use, everything they set up, I guess. Um, that's, yeah, that's probably one for me that I'd say, you know, really left an impression. No, absolutely, mate. Beautiful. As I said, they're doing great things, obviously, the youth system and that in um, Newcastle, and they're producing, obviously, a lot of young talent, and so through, obviously, over the years, um, you know, we could sit here for an hour and rattle, rattle off how many players they've produced in the A-League currently, so... But no, as I said, mate, we're going to leave it there. We're going to thank you one last time for your time. Um, hopefully, we'll get you on at some point when the A-League sort of resumes and we get back to a bit of normal, and you can um, tell us the inside tips of what Western Sydney Wanderers are got. <laughs> we'll try and get him on the week the week they're playing the Jets and get oh, some inside any, tips. Any, what any Danny's next prank is. Not bad. Any time. <laughs> no <laughs> worries, mate. Thanks heaps for that. Oh, boys. Thank you, boys. Cheers, Lavi. Thank you, mate. So, hey, boys, one more thing. Yes. Yeah. You get better the bills than I've called from my phone. Oh, no worries, mate. All done. <laughs> See, or send them through to send them through to Laurie. See you, See you mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to Labby. Um, <laughs> Laurie's going to be tagging Christine soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you yeah. hear that? You hear that? Did you hear that, Laurie? Apparently, you were paying Labby's phone bill. Yeah. Don't ask me. He's on the books of Western Sydney, but yeah, you're copping that one. Um, but yeah, no, th- thanks heaps, guys, obviously, for everyone who has tuned in. Thanks again to Labby. It took a little bit um, of time, unfortunately. We do apologise for the late delay and all the dramas we had with obviously getting him on. Um, congratulations to Danny McDougall for obviously winning one of those signed shirts. Um, as I said, I'll speak to you and I'm sure the boys from Newcastle, pardon me, supporters group, will be in contact. Um other than that, thank you to Laurie, everybody who's been in the chat on Facebook, YouTube side of things. If you haven't subscribed or liked my Facebook page, please go and do that. It um, means a lot. Uh, I think I'm almost hitting 100 subs. So when we hit 100... That's on the YouTube side. On the YouTube side, 100 subs. Um, I think I'm at about 94 or so now. So if we can get to 100, I'm going to do another giveaway. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to give away just yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> um as I said, we'll try and sort out another shirt for the Newcastle boys if we can't get that one back and do one on do one at a later date, obviously. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit hard now with obviously all the boys finishing up and your likes of um, Bobby Burns and so forth gone. So getting their signatures yeah, for this season is going to be a bit rough. But um, we'll see what we can do, see what we can come up with. If we can track one down, we, um, we'll sort something out like that. But yeah, go check out... Ben from Corner Flag Games um, on YouTube, Twitch, his Facebook page as well. Um, thank you very much for jumping on again, as always. Always a pleasure. Um, be sure to go over to, as I said, Newcastle Jets supporters group over there and um, click, you know, make sure you stay there and like like their page and get on their stuff. Uh, I didn't get much time to obviously go into, you know, obviously business and so forth, but obviously, again, I put up last week, which I'll do tomorrow as well, on our trivia. So be sure to come. Ah, yes. Be sure to come back tomorrow night. Bit of, bit of trivia, bit of fun. Carry of a champ. Tony will be here. I I'm praying that we don't have too much drama like that. And I should have Jacob Pepper, former Newcastle Jet, former, former Brisbane Raw, now obviously over in Indonesia, um, playing his trade over there. He. Um, okay. Apparently, Laura said he would get another one with the football for fires logo. There we go, verted here first. We'll get that auction. Um, we'll get that and then we'll um, obviously raffle it off or we'll do something and so forth. But um, Oh, Rhonda's I, just joined us. Rhonda, how you going? Um, but yeah, be sure to tune in tomorrow. Trivia tomorrow night, Alex. Trivia tomorrow night, Alex. Absolutely. I do believe we um, 
he he thinks he's keen. He thinks he can. Tip, he thinks he's keen. He thinks he can tip off the carry of a champ. Unfortunately. Oh wow. So we'll see what happens there. As I said, Peps should be here tomorrow as well, 8 p.m. Same time. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Obviously, Tony from the Three Bears. If you haven't ordered, got your orders in for Mother's Day breakfast for your mum, do so. Uh, he'll deliver it. <laughs> Laurie's complaining he was robbed by Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever you want to come on and take him on again, mate, no drummers at all. Um, <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard he stitched you up on the Monday morning as well when you went and got your coffee and brekkie or when something. When you got so, his wrap. <laughs> yeah, his wrap, yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, but yeah, as I said, big shout out to obviously Tony. Thanks again to Laurie and the Newcastle Jets. As I said, we're just here to, you know, kill a bit of time. Only if the questions are on leads. There'll be no questions on leads, mate. Um, we'll make sure that there's none on leads then. Yeah, absolutely. So be sure to be here tomorrow. Kefi Cafe. Gabrielle Ma, optometrist, thank you to you guys, obviously, as well, for doing your bit in getting your business logos into us. If you have a business logo... Or you know, you know somebody who has a business. You know someone who has a business logo. PNG file, uh, crossbar capers at gmail.com. Get it into us. We'll whack it up in a slideshow like the others. And as I said, if we can promote anything, we'll do it. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, it's all about, obviously, helping out the local businesses, businesses. and franchises and whatever else you've got so till tomorrow guys we will catch you then peace out and as always we, we hate, hate coast scum. scum sorry Lo. see you mate